Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy, and today I'm tackling a commonly asked question about making your own maps. How do you build them? What steps do you take? What order do you do things? And most importantly, does it matter? So let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna be talking about three major orders of operation, okay? People ask me all the time about how you go about constructing a map and which order you choose to do things. Well, here's a couple of different options. Option number one, which is what I'm doing on the screen now, gonna be building a map starting with the biomes first, okay? We're gonna do biomes, terrain, settlements, paths, and decorations. Now, some big benefits to this method is that if you go ahead and lay out your biomes, it's gonna give you an idea of where everything's gonna go, okay? Especially if you're new to map making, you may not kind of have an idea of where all your terrain's gonna be and you know how to balance out uh, the different biomes in your map so that they take up the appropriate amount of space. So this allows you to sort of map the map, if you will. Uh, it sort of gives you a layout, lets you know what is going to go where. This also helps you balance out your biomes. If you know that your tundra is going to be a third of your map, you know that your temperate is going to be a third, you know your desert is going to be a third, well, you can go ahead and draw that out, paint your landscape, and that way you have an idea of the proportions that you're going to keep throughout the process. And it also sets the feel. Once you've kind of laid out your biomes, you've laid out what's going to go where kind of thing, uh, it's going to give you a sense of how the map's going to feel by the time that you're done. Now, some drawbacks to this method, uh, you know, you risk the potential for having to go back over and reshade some of the things that you've already done. If you draw out your biome, you know, and partway through the process, you decide to change where mountains are going to go and change where settlements are going to go, you may end up going over and double shading uh, various parts of your map. The other thing is that when you look at a map, especially a world map, you know, the terrain is the centerpiece. So this doesn't really make the terrain the centerpiece. Uh, because you're being dictated by what you set as your biomes. All right, our second order of operation is going to determine that your settlements are going to be the first thing you place. Now, the benefit to that is if you already have an existing storyline or you're you know, emulating or copying something that is already written, this is going to make sure that your settlement's in the right spot. For example, if you have a seaside town that is surrounded by mountains, this makes sure that your seaside and your mountains are in the right spot for your settlement. Uh, the other thing is that it actually allows for your space for your settlements. Now, what you'll find is if you do terrain first, sometimes you'll limit yourself on what area your settlement's going to have to be on, and then you'll end up going back and you'll move some mountains, you'll move some trees and things, uh, and that sort of can limit you, and it takes a little bit of time. The big benefit there is that you save some time in shading, right? So if you're setting up your terrain, you're setting up your settlements, uh, you go back through and you shade it, and you shade your entire map once. Now, there's probably a lot of arguments about whether or not uh, any which one of these methods is the better method to use. Now, I personally do my terrain first. Uh, again, I like to make my terrain the sort of centerpiece of the map, you know, with the, the broad, sprawling mountains. And, you know, I like to weave my trees in and out, and then I don't mind taking a couple moments just to move my settlements around. But again, if you are a settlement-focused story uh, or a campaign, if you're running a role-playing game you know this is going to be the one for you now some drawbacks is that you know when you're placing your settlements and then your terrain you're going to have to remember where all of your different biomes are going to be so if you have specific space requirements for those biomes you know it's going to take you a moment you're going to have to remember where all those things go and the other thing is like i mentioned before it could mean that you're going to end up juggling around some things you might juggle around some mountains or some trees uh, in order to fit your settlements in the places you think they should go now, order number three. Now, this is typically the one I tend to use just because it's kind of a form of habit. But I'm going to start by placing the terrain first. Again, when I think of a map, especially a world map, I think of a broad, sprawling set of mountains. Uh, you think of trees and it really sets the stage for how the overall map looks. Now, you know, as far as functionality goes, really, they all kind of go the same way. But uh, this makes sure that the overall look of your map is going to be what you're thinking, okay? The other thing, much like the previous version, is that you really only end up shading once. So you only have to paint the land that one time once you're done. Uh, you know, it does, on the other hand, uh, also give you the opportunity to make sure that there's enough space for your terrain. Uh, last thing you want to do is shade your biomes, put your settlements in, and then all of a sudden realize that you didn't leave enough 
space for the mountain range that you wanted there to be. So just make sure that all of those things are intact. The biggest drawback to this one is that kind of once again, much like the other technique is that you're making sure that you have to visualize where all of your things are gonna go, right? You're visualizing where your biomes are gonna be. So once you've set your terrain and you've set your settlements, then you have to go back over and paint. And if you have a specific layout or you have a specific uh, ratio that you want your biomes to be, you know, this, this may cause a little bit of problems. Uh, but again, I, I really like doing the terrain first as a personal preference. Now, uh, each of you, certainly, uh, especially as a beginning map maker, there's, a, there's gonna be a lot of choices. And setting up the biomes is going to make sure that you put the right terrain in the right places. So that might be a good suggestion for a beginner. But once you've gotten used to map making, roll this your oyster. If you have any questions about how to make maps, and especially at Incarnate and Wonder Draft, I've got a set of tutorials down in the description below. And as always, thank you and have a good day. Alrighty, folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more similar content, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you have ideas for new videos or things specifically you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Thanks.